M. Bellicino. Bonjour. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez une déclaration à faire? Non, allons-y. Euh, vous avez vu qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup d'inquiétudes dans la communauté, euh, des chasseurs notamment, certains agriculteurs qui se demandent si ce que vous proposez comme amendement sur les arbres, ça ne va pas trop loin. Ma question, est-ce que vous êtes prêt à retirer certains modèles de la liste proposée pour essayer de trouver un terrain d'art? Mais tout d'abord, il faut reconnaître que c'est la journée avant l'anniversaire de la tragédie de Fusillade à la Polytechnique. Euh, J'allais euh, là demain pour euh, être euh, avec toutes les familles euh, de la victime et même les survivantes. Euh, c'est très important que nous continuons de travailler ensemble Uh, tous les Canadiennes uh, pour réduire uh, et éliminer la violence causée par la zone à feu. Sur la question de le projet de loi C-21, uh, depuis les débuts, le gouvernement était très clair que nous ne ciblons pas le chasse la chasseur, uh, les propriétaires uh, de, des armes à feu. Nous ciblons les armes d'assaut, les armes de style de guerre qui étaient utilisés dans les plus, uh, tra uh, plus grandes tragédies dans l'histoire de le pays. Par exemple, à la Polytechnique, uh, aussi à uh, Nouvelle-Écosse, à port de truro Donc, ça, c'est le début du projet de loi. Et on va travailler ensemble avec tous les parlementaires, avec le comité qui étudiait le détail de la langue de ce projet de loi. Et il faut uh, baser le débat sur les faits. Donc, ça, c'est les faits. Est-ce que vous êtes prêt, si vous vous entendez, à retirer certains modèles qui auraient peut-être, se seraient peut-être retrouvés là par erreur, qui n'ont peut-être pas la place sur votre liste? Est-ce que vous gardez la porte ouverte? Mais il faut souligner que si l'étude euh, de le comité sur le projet de loi montrait qu'il y a quelques armes à feu qui est utilisée par des chasseurs, oui, nous restons toujours ouvertes pour éliminer cette arme euh, de feu. Euh, par exemple, je sais qu'il y a quelques modèles euh, qui, euh, qui étaient soulignés dans le public. Oui, la porte est ouverte pour faire des modifications, pour éliminer les armes, de saut, qui, euh, pardon, les armes à feu qui sont utilisées par les chasseurs. Mais le bout restait le même que le, depuis le début, que nous ciblons euh, les armes de saut qui sont utilisées dans la tragédie euh, qui a causé plein de, de décédés. Oui. Well, first, I think it's important to recognize that this is the day before the 33rd anniversary of the Polytechnic Institute shooting. Uh, I will be going there to grieve with the families of the victims and the survivors, some of whom I have worked very closely with on this file, including Natalie Prevost. I think it's important to recognize their bravery, their courage, their tenacity in supporting the work of this government to eliminate uh, gun violence once and for all. Um, look, with regards to uh, some of the social media posts by Carrie Price and some others, I would say that based on the images that we've seen that the gun in Carrie Price's social media post is legal and will continue to be legal even after we pass Bill C-21, and that our main object has been consistent and clear all along, which is that we are not targeting law-abiding gun owners, but rather those AR-15 style guns which have been used in some of the worst uh, shooting tragedies in the country's history, including at Polytechnic, which is why we owe it to them, to the families, to the victims, to all Canadians, to have a debate that is based on facts, not fear. And it continues to be uh, a concern of mine that the Conservatives are sowing fear among law-abiding gun owners. And you see now the consequences of that, where people are operating from false assumptions and confusion. Um, we need to make sure that we have a thoughtful debate that is based on the facts, and that is precisely what I have committed and the government have committed to doing all along, and we're going to work very closely with the committee as they study the language of that bill to make sure that it is in alignment with the government's intent. Oui? Oui. I just have a couple of questions from you, yes. from a Toronto colleague. Uh, Toronto's police chief's calling on the federal government to amend the criminal code so that people who intentionally use a gun in a public setting prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and charged with first degree murder. They also want uh, more funding for the CBSA to crack down on firearms smuggling and trafficking. Are these things you're willing to examine as public safety? Well, first, I want to thank the Toronto Police Service for their good work in busting uh, one of the, the larger gun seizures uh, recently. And, and it is the guns that they seized, the AR-15 style guns, the Glocks, 
that have no place in our communities, and that is the object of Bill C-21. With regards to the Chief's comments around making more investments in the CBSA, as I have consistently underlined, in the last two years alone, we have been allocated $450 million to the CBSA, which will put more boots on the ground, which will make sure that they have the state-of-the-art technology that they, that they need to stop illegal gun smuggling at our borders. And this will allow them to build on the progress that they've made in the last number of years where we have seen those seizures go up. Do we need to do more? Absolutely, but we're going to work very closely with local and regional police services to do just that. Et sa sortie. Et là, on apprend que, selon le Canadien de Montréal, l'organisation du Canadien, Carrie Price ignorait l'existence de la tuerie de Polytechnique euh, avant de faire sa sortie. Est-ce que ça vous inquiète de savoir que, que Carrie Price ignorait le tout de ce massacre-là? Mais écoute, euh, il faut que tous les Canadiens euh, arrêtent pour un moment pour reconnaître le sens de partout que la famille de la victime et les survivantes continuent d'exprimer de, euh, de, avec, avec, euh, avec moi, avec tout le monde. C'est un moment très dur. L'anniversaire euh, est un marqué d'occasion très dur pour, pour eux. Et ça, c'est la raison qu'il faut continuer d'aller plus loin avec des investissements à la frontière pour arrêter les trafics illégaux des armes à feu. Ça, c'est la raison qu'il faut avancer une stratégie de prévention pour arrêter la violence causée par les hommes à feu dans le premier instant. Et ça, c'est la raison qu'il faut continuer un débat responsable basé sur les faits, sur le projet de loi C-21, qui cible non pas les chasseurs, mais les criminels et les hommes de saut qui ont été utilisés dans les tragédies de Fusillade. Merci beaucoup. Bon, mais ça me fait plaisir de vous voir. It's a pleasure to see all of you. Um, I'll start in French, puis après je vais aller en anglais. Uh, pourquoi? Parce que je vous parle d'Haïti aujourd'hui. Donc, comme vous l'avez vu un petit peu plus tôt aujourd'hui, nous avons uh, décidé d'imposer de nouvelles sanctions, des sanctions qui visent particulièrement l'élite économique du pays. Et ça, ça fait suite à plusieurs sanctions qui ont été imposées à, sur l'élite politique. Alors, le but, c'est vraiment de sanctionner ces personnes qui participent à fomenter la violence, qui soutiennent les gangs et qui, au final, participent à un système de corruption qui fait en sorte que euh, le peuple en souffre à Haïti présentement. Euh, les trois personnes sont Sheriff Abdallah, euh, Reynold euh, Dib et également Gilbert Bigot. Alors, ça, bien entendu, on va travailler sur d'autres sanctions, mais aujourd'hui, ce sont les trois sanctions euh, que nous avons annoncées. So today we're announcing impor important sanctions against the economic elite in Haiti, and this is after sanctioning many important political elite in Haiti. Um, it is important, why? Because we believe it's the way to make sure that there is strong pressure on the elites to stop, to support the violence that is spread by gangs across the country, and which is making the, the country uh, unable to support its own population. And so three uh, persons have been um, sanctioned, Gilbert Bigot, uh, Reynold Dib, and Sherif Abdallah. I can take your questions. Sur l'Iran, j'aimerais vous entendre sur la police de la, mo le, de la moralité. Oui. Quelles sont les, les garanties, peut-être, ou des informations que vous, vous avez obtenues à savoir si c'est bel et bien terminé, tout ça, puis euh, euh, qu'est-ce qui a changé, là, euh, Bien, sur la question de l'Iran, je vous dirais premièrement que pour nous, euh, c'est euh, très, très important de continuer de soutenir les femmes et les filles en Iran. Euh, et moi, personnellement, ça m'interpelle énormément et c'est pourquoi j'en ai parlé même la semaine passée lorsque j'étais en Europe avec plusieurs de mes collègues ministres des Affaires étrangères femmes. Euh, et puis, quant à la, la, la question de la police de la moralité, bien, c'est pas compliqué. Quand on va… pour moi, là, c'est vraiment… il faut le voir pour le croire. Puis là, pour l'instant, on ne l'a toujours pas vu. Donc, euh, mon objectif, c'est de continuer à mettre de la sanction, à mettre, euh, à imposer euh, euh, 
euh, des sanctions et mettre de la pression. On a déjà imposé des sanctions sur la, la police de la moralité. J'aimerais vous entendre sur un enjeu qui touche Montréal. On vient d'apprendre que Carrie Price euh, ignorait tout du massacre de Polytechnique avant de faire sa sortie en fin de semaine euh, pour euh, la question des armes où il appuyait le, le CCFR, la coalition là, pour les armes à feu. Euh, vous réagissez comment quelqu'un qui, qui a passé tant d'années à Montréal et qui euh, ignorait l'existence de, 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 de ce massacre? Écoutez, je ne commenterai pas directement sur Carey Price, mais ce que je peux vous dire présentement, c'est qu'il euh, y a des fusillades qui ont lieu à Montréal, à travers la région de Montréal, dans mon comté, dans ces quartiers villes Les gens sont tannés d'être à risque, euh, d'être, euh, dans le fond, blessés euh, par les armes à feu. Et ils, ils nous ont donné un mandat, ils m'ont donné un mandat. Ils s'attendent à ce qu'on en fasse plus pour interdire les armes à feu et c'est exactement ce qu'on fait. Puis demain, c'est l'anniversaire de la Polytechnique. Alors, euh, bien entendu, je serai là pour euh, commémorer euh, cette, euh, cette fusillade. C'est quoi ce travail qui reste à faire, peut-être, de vous sensibiliser sur ce genre de, de, de féminicide? Il y a énormément de travail à faire, justement, sur la question de, de, de féminicide. Euh, féminicide. Écoutez, même en fin de semaine dernière, il y a eu, euh, euh, des, des, dans le fond, euh, des, des un, un groupe lié aux armes à feu qui a voulu faire la promotion de la vente d'armes à feu en utilisant le terme « poli ». Je ne sais pas qui peut avoir cette idée. Je ne sais pas qui n'a pas de cœur pour penser que c'est une bonne idée de faire de la promotion, d'acheter de, des armes à feu en utilisant la référence à la fusillade de Polytechnique. Mais Carrie Price, vous encouragez ces gens-là? Moi, ce que je vous dis, c'est que, sincèrement, notre objectif, c'est de continuer d'interdire de, les armes à feu. Il faut que les conservateurs arrêtent de filibuster. On doit passer euh, la législation. La population au Québec et au Canada s'attend à ce qu'on fasse ça. Despite sanctions against Iran, parts from a Canadian company have been found in Iranian drones used by Russians in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What is the government willing to do to make it more difficult for Canadian parts to end up in these? So a couple of things on that. Obviously, we stand with Ukraine and all Ukrainians fighting for their freedoms and, and fighting for their lives. Uh, I can hereby confirm that uh, we did not emit any form of export permits to Russia nor to Iran. Uh, we want to make sure that Russia and Iran are, hold accountable, are held accountable, and we will contact also the Canadian company to make sure that we can follow up closely uh, to see what happened. Are export permits good enough? Like, this has happened before with ca Canadian companies distributing weapons to, you know, countries that we are not allied with, and you always go back to this export controls thing. Like, Expert, can, expert, our expert permits are important. Now, in this particular case, we want to follow up closely because we want to know what happened. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Alistair McGregor. I serve as the NDP's agriculture and agri-food critic. What Canadians learned in recent times, uh, just a report just came out recently which told Canadians that more pain is in store in terms of food prices in the year ahead. Many Canadians, when they're going grocery shopping these days, are making incredibly difficult decisions. Some are skipping out on meals altogether. Others are having to settle for lower quality food and in lower amounts. And unfortunately, because of inaction at the federal level, we're going to continue to see those prices rise. We're going to continue to see incredible pressures on families that can least afford it. And you juxtapose this right now with the incredible profits that large grocery chains are making right now, and it's clear our system needs a change. Now, I'm making mention of this today because this afternoon, the Standing Committee on Agriculture and Agri-Food is going to commence its study into greedflation, juxtaposing high food prices with the massive profits that grocery chains are making. I managed to initiate... I managed to initiate this study a couple of months ago with the unanimous consent of colleagues around the committee table because I think liberals, colleagues, liberals, conservatives, and the Bloc Québécois have all heard from their individual constituents that this is an issue of pressing concern and one that needs full investigation by our committee. And I was very pleased just a few short days later to see unanimous support in the House of Commons to support our committee's efforts. The NDP is taking a leadership position on this. We're not going to stop until we do a thorough investigation on the root causes of the problem, but more importantly, the solutions that we need to relieve Canadians of these skyrocketing prices. I'm pleased that investigation is going to start this afternoon, 
and we're going to really make sure that we delve down deep into this issue to get the answers that Canadians deserve on this particular topic. With that, I'd like to turn the microphone over to my colleague, Daniel Blakey, the Member of Parliament for Elmwood Transcona, for a few remarks. Salut tout le monde, nous sommes ici aujourd'hui parce qu'il y avait un rapport euh, aujourd'hui qui projette une augmentation de prix des épiceries l'année prochaine de 5 à 7 pendant les premières euh, quelques mois de 2023. Et nous savons très bien que les Canadiens et les Canadiennes sont déjà dans une situation très difficile par, par rapport à les coûts des, des euh, pisseries et d'autres choses comme, euh, comme, comme, comme les coûts de chauffage de maison. Et nous pensons que, que le gouvernement peut faire deux choses euh, pour aider aux Canadiens et euh, Canadiennes pendant ces temps difficiles. Euh, pour un, il pourrait euh, en, enlever le TPS euh, du euh, prix de chauffage des maisons et il peut implémenter une taxe sur les profits euh, excessifs des grandes corporations, y inclut les chaînes d'épicerie, euh, pour assurer qu'ils payent leur juste part. Parce que nous savons qu'il y a des mesures que le, le, le gouvernement fédéral devrait prendre, comme, comme, comme ils ont, euh, aux demandes du NPD, doublé le, le, le rabais du euh, TPS. Nous, euh, euh, nous avons besoin de trouver de l'argent pour payer pour ces initiative là puis il y a des grandes corporations qui augmentent leur prix plus que l'augmentation de leur coût et cette euh, et cette hausse de prix fait partie de de l'inflation qui euh, cause des grands problèmes pour les euh, familles ca canadiennes et, euh, canadiennes alors ce sont deux choses que nous pensons le gouvernement peut faire on va parler de ces choses là dans le Dans, dans la Chambre des communes, mais on va aussi parler de ces choses dans le contexte de l'étude et même, euh, je dirais, l'enquête euh, qui se passe au comité d'agriculture euh, que M. McGregor a commencé là. Aujourd'hui, ils vont euh, entendre des exécutifs des euh, grandes com compagnies d'épicerie et, euh, et c'est là où on va encore pousser pour des bonnes réponses euh, par rapport aux augmentations des prix et pour l'action du gouvernement pour assurer que ces grandes compagnies qui font beaucoup d'argent, euh, qui enlèvent beaucoup d'argent, en fait, des poches des Canadiens, paient leur juste part. May I ask, what do you want to hear from Loblaw CEO this afternoon? What do you hope to achieve by you? Well, the unfortunate thing is, is that we're not going to be hearing from Loblaw's CEO this afternoon. Uh, an invitation was extended directly to Mr. Galen Weston, but unfortunately, uh, he saw fit to send one of his executives in his stead. Um, it's unfortunate that Mr. Weston is ducking questions uh, that directly relate to his conduct as the head of his company. Uh, I had hoped to put him personally on the stand so that he could explain some of his company's business practices because I think people who shop food at his companies deserve an answer. They deserve to know uh, why his company continues to make some outlandish profits in the time when so many Canadians are struggling to put food on the table. So yes, we will have a representative from Loblaws today and I think it's an opportunity to just try and parse apart some of their profit margins and some of the business practices that they've engaged in. Because let's not forget, we have also had some reports of unfair business practices, not only from the consumer side of things, but also from the processing side of things. That's why for the last two years, we have been involved in a, um, you know, a code of conduct for grocers. So this is not new. Uh, we know the company has also been implicated uh, in, in bread price fixing in the past as well. So these are issues that we really want a committee to fully investigate. And I'm not going to presuppose where we're going to land on this, but I think it's important that Canadians see these companies before a parliamentary committee so that the public can get the answers that they need. I would like to hear you about the public safety and the, the proposition about around C21. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see, uh, and then the NEP see, a, some models maybe being pulled out of the, the list that is submitted or maybe some criteria that could be changed? Uh, what are your expectations of it around that? Uh, I understand that you're negotiating right now with the public safety minister. What would you like to see? Yeah, it's, um, so, 
since C21 was first introduced on May the 30th, um, our understanding of the bill was that it covered three main areas. It was a handgun freeze, it covered uh, a new proposed red flag regime, uh, and also covered airsoft. Um, we as committee members, uh, we, we did hear a slight mention from the minister that they were proposing such an amendment at the beginning, but we never heard any particular details. And as a result, all committee members have never had the opportunity during committee testimony to tailor our strategy. The big problem with this amendment, uh, I understand the good-natured intent behind it, but we as committee members have not had enough time to properly consult with constituents, with hunters, with farmers who may be adversely impacted by this. And for this amendment, this very substantial amendment to drop on our lap at the 11th hour is an abusive process in my opinion. Um, it needs more time for us to properly assess the impact. So I know this opinion is, is shared by a number of committee members um, and we are doing our best to present some options but we're, we're not really there yet is where I, what I would say. Now. Is it to remove some of the guns that are mentioned? I'm thinking of maybe the SKS that is largely used in the hunters community, uh, or is it just to buy more time? What, what's the focus of the negotiation that is going on? Well, I, I won't mention any specific models because, again, we're still in the middle of consulting and trying to develop an impact analysis on exactly what type of firearms are used by hunters and, and will these changes have an adverse impact on their lifestyle. We don't have this information yet. In fact, officials, when they first appeared before this committee, could not provide us th this information because the government itself had not conducted its own impact analysis before tabling this amendment. So again, um, we like to make decisions based on facts and based on properly informed opinions of expert witnesses, we have not had the opportunity to engage either of those avenues with this amendment. In principle, you are not opposed to what is being proposed to add some criteria about certain firearms and add a certain number of weapons to the list, but it's more in the way that's being done. In principle, I understand the intent behind it, but again, it's the process and the way it landed. We have not had the chance or the runway at committee to properly assess how it's going to impact a lot of people. And as you can see from public reaction, uh, this has affected a, a lot of people personally. They're quite concerned. So I just want to make sure as a committee member that I'm doing my due diligence. And again, we had eight meetings of witness testimony on C21. We had a whole range of experts from law enforcement to people who represent uh, victims' rights groups to people who re represent the gun lobby. And they all said they all would have been valued in having some testimony on that. Just on food prices again, um, there is a, some consensus at least that part of the reason is because of the war uh, Russia is waging on Ukraine and oil prices. What more lights do you hope your investigation is going to shed on what's going on? Yeah, again, we, we don't want to limit ourselves just to, to grocery CEOs. I think in our witness list we're going to also include some economists, uh, consumer rights groups, and also people representing the processing side. This is an opportunity for us to collect information from all of those sectors to give us some valuable feedback. So um, I don't want to presuppose where we're going to land, but I am looking forward to some of that expert testimony. Thank you, everyone.